Good afternoon and welcome to Agri-Food Conversations brought to you by iSelect Fund, the Van Trump Report, the Yield Lab Institute, and Family Farms Group. My name is Tom Bunn. I'm an associate on the iSelect Fund Ventures team, and I'm excited to welcome you all to our discussion today. As you know, Agri-Food Conversations is all about driving innovation in food and ag. Each month, we highlight a specific theme, and this month's theme is inputs in biologics. And on today's call, we are joined by Nico Pinkowski, the co-founder of Nitricity. Nitricity's technology is capable of producing nitrogen fertilizer directly at the point of use. Removing the long supply chain allows farmers to apply fertilizers when their fields are ready, reducing wasteful runoff and maximizing nitrogen delivery anywhere in the world. Its technology has the potential to produce cost-effective fertilizer for environmentally conscious farms, as well as for developing markets outside of traditional supply chain infrastructures. Each of you knows companies are more likely to succeed with the right network of customers, talent, investors, and advisors. We have invited you to this call because you are some of the smartest, most talented people in Nitricity's market. You are potential customers for their products and services. You've built a company similar to Nitricity's or in the same sector, or you are a sophisticated business person or ag professional who understands their market and the challenges and opportunities that they will inevitably face. Before we get started, we do have a quick poll question to get a better idea of who we have on the call today. Please take a couple moments to answer. And while you are answering the poll question, a couple process comments. We are not soliciting investment in any way whatsoever. This presentation is to provide information to help Nico and Nitricity find customers, mentors, and other strategic relationships that can help Nitricity grow their business. Uh, secondly, you are all on mute. However, you can use the chat window to ask a question at any time. Uh, we will have a, a dedicated section for Q&A at the end during which you can chat uh, or type a question in or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you and you can ask Nico a question directly. Um, and finally, this presentation is being recorded and will be available for replay. So with that, without further delay, I am pleased to introduce Nico Pinkowski, again, the co-founder of Nitricity. Thanks for joining us, Nico. Thank you very much for the warm introduction, and it's a pleasure to be, uh, you know, have the opportunity to speak to this uh, community. I, uh, you know, I hope to keep it short and uh, engage thoroughly through uh, questions and through the chat, and uh, you know, please populate them there. And uh, yeah, beyond that, if you're hoping to get in contact, we always love speaking with um, folks such as farmers or others in the in the in ag. Um, and, uh, you know, my, my email is nico, N-I-C-O, at nitricity.co, and would, would love to hear from you uh, about anything or any interest in our product. Uh, you know, Nitricity Inc. is, is our business. We founded in, in 2018 out of Stanford University uh, with, with one objective. Uh, you know, we are a fertilizer manufacturer, and our objective is the, uh, to decarbonize the production of nitrogen fertilizer today. Uh, and so, you know, we, our team is founded of, with, you know, initially four PhD and post, uh, three PhDs and one postdoc at Stanford. And yeah, we're, we're climate, uh, you know, climate focused and looking for a, a cost attractive way to decarbonize the production of fertilizer. And in our search, uh, you know, we found a bunch more and iterated to a, uh, an approach that we think is, is, is very exciting. And I'm delighted to share it with you. We are a manufacturer of fertilizer. We do one thing. And we, we produce it, um, but we do so differently than it's been done before in the past. Uh, Nitricity produces fertilizer on farm uh, using inputs of only air, water, and renewable electricity, starting first with solar in California, Central Valley. Um, although, you know, this works just as well with wind. To put this into context, you know, I, I think a picture shows a million words. And, you know, this is the first thing that we developed and, and put actually on a rooftop that started making fertilizer. Uh, so this is, you know, you know Dr. Jay Schwalbe, Dr. Josh, and myself, Nico at Stanford University. Uh, Brian's another co-founder, shown in another picture in this presentation. But this is, this is what we're all about. You know, we developed a, a fertilizer production asset, we call it, and we put it on the roof. It looks like a solar panel, but underneath this solar panel is the equipment that converts uh, air and water into fertilizer. And so we, we, you know, we take water, and we slowly turn this into a concentrated form of fertilizer, a nitrate-based fertilizer known as nitric acid. 
and we can do other things with that. We've made solid form from that. And so this system actually, we made a little bit of solid form calcium nitrate fertilizer. This is our first ever one and, and kind of shows our roots. And uh, I'll show on the next slide, you know, where, you know, what we're building now, which is approximately 900, 900 times larger than this. It's, it's a bit of a scale up. We, we've had quite some uh, success in the past year in terms of grants and award funding. Um, you know, but most importantly, we've gotten a lot of engagement from customers and farms big and small from around the world that are interested in on-farm solar fertilizer production. Uh, notably, you know, Valmont Industry is a large producer of center pivot irrigations. You know, a company like AgReserves or even foundations uh, like Af Africa Rice are, are very interested in us. And uh, I usually have you know, one farm shown here. I, I've decided to uh, cross it out uh, as you know, we're actively under development with a project. But where we've gone now is you know, from that little rooftop system, we then put a solar fertilizer system on a farm in Central Valley for, uh, and coupled it with uh, irrigated tomato production. And this is a, you know, the system was sized for one acre. It's three kilowatts of solar shown, shown on the left. And we, we piled all the, the, the production hardware needed to turn air and water into uh, fertilizer. We, we put that all underneath the panels. And uh, you know, effectively this required our team moving down to uh, Fresno for about a month or two. And you know, we rebuilt the system in place maybe once or twice, but eventually you know, got it working pretty good. And now I can log online and watch it make fertilizer every day while the sun's up and then you know, turns off yeah, at, at the end of the day. So it's running intermittently. What we're building next is even more exciting. And we're working with a, a big farm that will soon release the name of it in California, Central Valley. But we're, we're scaling up. We want to reach a commercial size, something that can be used to make fertilizer in an agronomic rate. And so we're, we're coupling with a 25 acre plot and hope to expand it to the rest of the acreage on our, our, our test plot, which is actually up to 75 acres. Uh, we're putting down 50 kilowatts of solar in a corner of the field right next to the irrigation head, uh, as, as well as we're also putting down a shipping container. But in this shipping container is the technology required to turn the intermittent solar electricity into fertilizer. Also in this shipping container is a technology to um, inject fertilizer at a very uh, you know, high frequency, low dosage rate directly to the irrigation system. So this is actually a picture of the, the, our shipping container that was just recently installed and the farmer's um, irrigation setup, and we'll be injecting into this line here. So you know, zooming out, this is a hardware to turn air, water, and electricity into fertilizer, and then you know, it can enable the field to actually fertilize itself, which is very exciting. So looking at why now and, and why focus on fertilizer is that uh, there's an opportunity today that we've, we've never seen uh, before. And this is largely due to the decreased cost of intermittent electricity. Solar panels today um, are so cheap, it, it's, it's really unfathomable. The installed dollar per watt of solar over the past 10 years has, has plummeted to, to well below a dollar per watt. And so for our current farm, we're installing the solar actually at uh, much less than a dollar per watt. And this is benefited um, by the fact that we don't have to couple to the grid. And so we don't have those costs. Um, and we also don't have to pay for the land because as part of the contract with this farmer, he allowed us to use a portion of the land and we'll provide fertilizer and sell it to him at a given rate. And so we don't have to, the rental fee for the land, nor do we have the grid tie fee with miscellaneous hardware required to do that. So our, our levelized electricity cost is extremely low. In parallel, we'll need more fertilizer tomorrow than we need today. We have a growing global population and a, and a burgeoning demand for food and fertilizer. Uh, you know, the fertilizer market is projected to be $100 billion uh, for nitrogen alone by 2025, indicating a growing need, uh, intersecting with a new and exciting opportunity of a, of a low cost resource. However, how, how fertilizer is produced today is, is done you know, perhaps a bit backwards. You know, from the production to the distribution to the application, there's, there's areas to optimize this industry today. The production of fertilizer is done in uh, very centralized, immense Haber-Bosch facilities. There's actually only about 200 of these facilities in the entire world. Uh, and th these facilities inhale coal or natural gas and exhale ammonia, carbon dioxide, and methane, and many other types of emissions. 
Uh, you then have to get this fertilizer from 200 factories to 4 billion acres of farmland. And so there's a, a convoluted, hazardous, and expensive distribution chain that contributes to global carbon dioxide emissions, sure. But most importantly, this distribution chain is, is increasing the cost of fertilizer. You know, farmers are going to pay about three to five X the cost of fertilizer in California as, as what it does at the factory gate um, in Trinidad, Tobago, or Canada, where this fertilizer is coming from. In the Midwest, it's, it's slightly less, but there's still a substantial markup, you know, perhaps 2x of the, the cost increase between a factory and the farm um, where this is needed. Lastly, the types of fertilizer that are getting to farms and, and when and how they're applied often leads to ineffective nutrient management. You know, for some, you know, ammonia is commonly used in the Midwest or other forms of nitrogen dense fertilizer are used around the world, you know, and largely these are used because of their low cost and availability. However, are these fertilizers the best for the soil? Are these fertilizers the best that can reduce runoff and field-based nitrous, nitrous oxide emissions? And we think that often cases is not, not the case. And so there's a, a big opportunity to improve how we apply fertilizer today, to improve nitrogen use efficiency, and therefore accordingly decrease emissions and costs associated, associated with over-fertilization. All in all, there's a big carbon dioxide equivalent impact that uh, the nitrogen fertilizer industry has uh, should we come up with a renewable approach to produce this. It's on the order of three gigatons per year. Our solution to these, these problems is, is to focus not on the factories, um, but on the farms where this fertilizer is needed. And so, you know, we install a fertilizer production asset like this on the left, we, we call it the, the Haber-Bosch squasher. This is our first ever system. And it sits in every day with the waking sun. It produces fertilizer until it turns off in the afternoon and it stores this uh, as well as we, we have a smart system that couples directly to the irrigation and we uh, inject this fertilizer, uh, leading the farmer to not really have to deal with this fertilizer at all. They tell us the application rate they want and how much and we make it happen. Our next system is even larger and we're testing this on a, on a commercial farm. Uh, you know, we're, we'll be producing tonnage of fertilizer and uh, you know, starting at uh, being responsible for 15 to 25 acres. Actually, this says 15 to 200 pounds. Uh, we're, we're likely to do 25 at, at a lower rate, to like 100 to 150 pounds of N per acre. We're doing a direct integration with irrigation. We're giving the farmer a button. Uh, so when they want fertilizer, uh, they, they, they can apply it with their standard water. It'll be a low concentration form, in this case, uh, about 3% nitric acid in water uh, applied at a high frequency. The market for nitrogen fertilizer is immense and highly varied. You know, this is a, a plot that represents this, this complex market as shown as total market size on the y-axis in billions of dollars as a rough function of the cost of fertilizer uh, that you'll find in the marketplace in terms of dollars per pound of nitrogen normalizing across many different types of fertilizer in many different places of the market. On one extreme, you can go to Home and Depot, you can go to Home Depot or Lowe's, and if you buy a bag of fertilizer there, you're spending 20 to $30 a pound for nitrogen. Um, and that, that's extremely expensive, but that is a multi-billion dollar market nonetheless. You'll notice that even the lawn and garden fertilizer market serviced by companies like miracle Grow, um, you'll see is you know, multiple billions of dollars. Pushing left, you'll see smaller markets like uh, organic or larger markets like organic fertilizer, which is you know, approximately $9 billion marketplace a day. And you know, organic fertilizers are very expensive, uh, often above five pounds or $5 per pound of nitrogen. Moving further, you'll start to see bulk fertilizers. You know, the farthest, the most expensive are things like nitrates, potassium nitrate, calcium nitrate. Um, and then you start to move into things with ammonium ions in them that are cheaper to ship around like calcium ammonium nitrate. And then you know, furthest to the left, you'll see ammonia and hydrous ammonia in an Iowa cornfield um, or urea um, shipped around the world. And you know, if you can produce fertilizer for the cheapest, you have access to the total $100 billion market size. You know, alternatively, if you're making $5 per pound of N, you may be limited to about $10 billion market size cattle. You know, where we are today with our first ever system 
is situated halfway between bulk fertilizer prices, specialty bulk fertilizers, and organic fertilizer. Our one acre NVP, we've estimated the production cost is somewhere between three and four dollars per pound of N. And we're by scaling the system up and pushing left, our cost target for a 75 acre system is somewhere between one and two dollars per pound of N. And this isn't just a, a number on a plot. You know, farmers are willing to pay more for fertilizer if they have certain characteristics or if they come with other value adds. Our next contract, the, the 25 acre system or the 50 kilowatt system I showed, uh, our locked in nitrogen price is $1.50 per pound of N. Because we're providing a specialty type of fertilizer and we're adding other value adds that can reduce labor costs for the farm. Elaborating further on our initial beachhead market, you know, on farm production of fertilizer today is, is you can look at more value propositions than just paying or farmers buying uh, pounds of nitrogen. In Central Valley, is, this is a great starter market for us because the soil is very alkaline. So today, farms in Central Valley use irrigation and they require uh, chemicals for both pH management and to provide nitrogen to the farm. So an almond orchard may, may supply a sulfur-based acid as well as nitrogen fertilizer. A great beachhead market for nitricity is we can turn air and water into nitric acid and uh, supplying both the acid value and the nitrogen value as a two for one deal to the farm. And this is part of the reason why farmers uh, are willing to pay between a dollar and $2 per pound of N for our, for our fertilizer. An alternative business model than buying a chemical from a, from a nearby factory is you work with nitricity and, and we formulate a, a, a fertilizer subscription model or an offtake price. Uh, we can own and operate the fertilizer assets on your farm, or you can buy it if you prefer. But if we own and operate it, uh, we can provide a dollars per acre per year or dollars per pound agreement with the grower and give you full control over the pH, the timing, and in the, in the specific form. We can also neutralize it with calcium or potassium um, to, add, to give you a couple different options for fertilizer. On the back end, if we do the subscription model, Nitricity has, has to organize the back end financing and management of these assets. Um, if, if the farmer just wants to purchase a system, uh, we'll likely organize a maintenance contract with that farmer. But should we, you know, and as we're seeing, you know, if, if we can leverage the extra value add of pH management in California Central Valley, even with our first prototypes, we're seeing a cost angle that's immediately apparent and it's why farmers are saying yes to our fertilizer. You know, looking at what farmers are paying for acid today in Central Valley, uh, many have to spend about $100 per acre to correct the soil pH. On now, if you look at how much acid that we can supply, supplying all that same acid that they need, we also provide them, you know, just over you know, 60 to $70 of nitrogen value in that acid. So this two for one deal, um, we've estimated our production cost is about $100 per acre uh, in this two for one acid value deal. We, we can generate substantial value per acre and, and split this with the farmer giving us both a margin and helping them save money. Taking a step back and, and in a concluding note, you know, one of the main reasons why our team is so excited about this approach is due to the potential emissions reductions associated with the fertilizers we can provide. So, you know, if you account for the carbon dioxide emissions associated with the production of fertilizer and um, benefits associated with low dosage, high frequency application of fertilizer and application um, in dry soils of a nitrate-based fertilizer as opposed to ammonium-based fertilizer, there can be substantial greenhouse gas uh, reductions that can be, uh, that can, that can be mitigated. Um, you know, this is a plot showing the CO2 equivalent emissions for every pound of nitrogen as a function of many different forms. Uh, red being from factory Haber-Bosch fertilizer that is purchased in the market and green being estimated emissions associated with our fertilizer that we can produce. Uh, we, can, we can produce all of the different types of fertilizer shown on the x-axis, but the first, the first four are, are the easiest for us to produce and also those with the uh, lowest cost and lowest emissions. Uh, unfortunately, the most widely used fertilizers in the marketplace today are those with the highest emissions, um, both from production and based on N2O field emissions once you put them in the ground. That's ammonium, ammonium nitrate, uh, calcium ammonium nitrate or diammonium phosphate. 
um, are, are very strongly favored in the market today, but have the, have the highest emission. You know, we think that we have a profitable pathway to both reduce emissions um, and uh, grow as a business in this uh, very large marketplace. And a concluding note, you know, I, our company is empowering the farmer to produce their own fertilizer. And what we wanna do is take the focus away from these 200 centralized factories and instead put the focus on the farms and on the soils. By, by installing nitrogen production assets on the farms, it helps shift, this, shift the focus to where the fertilizer is needed, hopefully uh, saving the farmer's emissions and hopefully saving the farmer's cost in the process. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, I, I'd love to answer any questions that anyone has. Great, Nico, thank you so much for joining. Um, thanks for the terrific presentation. Um, so for the audience's knowledge, once again, you can ask a question by using the Q&A box found in the middle of your screen, or you can raise your hand and I will unmute you to ask your question out loud. Um, <clears throat> but Nico, I guess to get things started, um, you know, we have a fairly diverse um, group of people on the line today um, and, and those who will be listening um, after the fact. How can, how can the, the Agri-Food Network help you? That's a great question. We're, we're looking to speak to farmers who want to try it out. Uh, we've developed a, a smaller one acre size system and we're developing a 25 acre system, um, you know, somewhere between 15 and 25 acres, depending on how much nitrogen per acre you need. Um, you know, we're, we're be, we'll be making bigger systems after this, but if you're interested in a one acre system or a 25 acre system, or you wanna test this, or you have solar uh, that you're not using right now uh, and interested in this or have contacts that are interested in it, let's do it, let's do a project. Um, you know, this system, we've chosen this system because it is low capital cost. So the cost of the hardware for a pilot can be fairly low. Um, the question is, where do we get electricity? And if you, if you have a farm that's got low cost electricity um, or solar, um, let's, let's test it out. And so if anyone in the network has, has leads on, on farms that want to test this or want to test it themselves, that would be very thrilling. Great, thanks. Looks like an, an anonymous attendee asks, what is your price what is, what is the price per pound of elemental fertilizer that you can produce? Currently with the smaller system, one you know put together with amazon.com and McMaster car parts, we've estimated our cost of production as, is somewhere between three and $4 per pound of nitrogen. We have to assume you know, a depreciation timeline to do that, um, but uh, that's our, our first estimated cost, which is pretty good. I think it's about halfway in between something like calcium nitrate and organic fertilizer. Uh, moving forward, you know, what we're doing is we're transitioning from using amazon.com parts um, to using a, you know, a more developed supply chain, which will drive down the cost. And we're also transitioning to a bigger product uh, by scaling up from a one acre system to a 25 acre system. We have all the same number of components. All the components are just slightly larger. And accordingly, our levelized cost per pound of nitrogen can de be decreased uh, and now is between a dollar and two dollars per pound of nitrogen. Our first offtake contract is about, is a buck fifty per pound bet. Great. Um, Doc asks, how do you store off season, and how do you buffer the acid when one already has pH levels between six and a half and seven? Two two good questions. Storing is easy. Now, for our one acre system, we put a tank right next to it, a two hundred gallon tank. And that's essentially a smoothing function between uh, a difference in production rate and uh, use rate. And that's a very low cost way to do it and has, has worked pretty good. Now, the, the second part of that question was, you know, what happens if you, know, you already have an ideal pH in your field and you don't need nitric acid, you'd wanna, you'd wanna balance the pH. It's very easy. We take one of the cheapest substances that's already available on farms, lime, and we combine it with the, with the nitric acid and then we have irrigable calcium nitrate fertilizer, which is a high value fertilizer. It's very good, it's very water soluble and can provide calcium, which promotes cell strength and early development in crops. What we can also do and have done for our current farm is instead of neutralizing or balancing the pH with lime, uh, we balance the pH with a potassium compound and then we make potassium nitrate. Now, if you wanna buy potassium nitrate, it's often a little tricky. Uh, it's not widely available in California it is widely available in, in some of the South, 
uh, but there's some emissions associated with shipping concentrated forms of potassium nitrate. Uh, we can make potassium nitrate and we can make it for a low cost. That's another good way to balance the pH and also add potassium into the mix. Great. Um, Lionel Ector asks, how much water is used or required for the 25 acre footprint, um, the 50 kilowatt in the 75 acre field? How much water is needed for that? So it's a, it's a fraction of a fraction of, of a percent of how much water goes for irrigation. Uh, we will probably use a thousand, we, we might use 5,000 gallons of water for this 25 acre system. Um, and there are, that is a, probably a fraction of a fraction of 1% of the water being applied through irrigation. Uh, we just use irrigation water. Uh, and so you, it, it isn't a cost in the line item that's appreciable. Great. Another anonymous attendee asks, what would the analysis be for one gallon of liquid that you would inject into a subsurface drip irrigation system? Great question. And um, so it's variable. We can set it. But, you know, one of our favorites is we like keeping the nitrogen percentage below 5% um, because then we don't have to worry about any storage regulations or anything like that. Um, so, you know, we can give you a button and a slider that says, what do you want in the storage tank? And then we have sensors that measure how much nitrogen per gallon is in our system. You set the level you want, you can get it. There is a cap. Uh, you cannot have more than, uh, with this approach, uh, with nitric acid, you can't have more than about 15 or 16% nitrogen by mass in there. Otherwise, um, well, that's the max you can have in nitric acid. SRH asks, what is the initial capital cost of installing the 75 acre system? If you have, um, so just the shipping container. This is, so you know, there's a, I showed a picture of a solar fertilizer system with the solar array and the shipping container. If we just focus on the shipping container for the 75 acre system, uh, you know, currently that's going to be around 30 to 35 thousand um, dollars. If we're if you have access to consistent electricity, um, if it's you know intermittent electricity, um, we'll have to make that slightly larger. Um, oh, part of me, that's 30 to 35 thousand dollars. Um, will be for about 50% you know, capacity factor less electricity. So you know, kind of taking advantage of lower cost rates. Um, it, it can be smaller if, if you have it turned on and running all the time in less than 30 to $35,000. Um, if it's you know, running 20% of the time, it's gonna be you know, you know, twice as expensive as that. The footprint of the 75 acre system, um, just a shipping container is, is nothing. If you include the solar plus the shipping container, uh, we've estimated that it accounts for 0 0.6 of a percent um, of land that can now not be used to grow crops. And so it is, it is, you know, it does take land away from crops, but it's less than 1% of the growing. It's a 0 0.6, including the fenced in area uh, will, will be have to be converted. Great. Nico, um, have you talked to any of the, uh, you know, the, the burgeoning carbon credit companies or marketplaces. Um, you know, obviously there's been a lot of talk recently about uh, carbon credits in farmers and given your uh, decrease, how will you fit into that, that ecosystem? We haven't yet um, leveraged or taken advantage of these carbon credits and have had live and we've had limited discussions with these companies to date. However, it's an extremely promising area and you know, would love to connect further if anyone in this network has a, a tie there. You know, we, we can provide an estimate of uh, the CO2 mitigation um, and it's, it's substantial. You know, for every pound of nitrogen applied, we'll be mitigating you know, about triple, if there's so three pounds of carbon dioxide with a very simple analysis. Um, and so and this, this could save the farm even more money and bring down the levelized cost per pound of N that we're applying. How much? It's still a question. Great. Well, if there are no other questions, again, Nico, I'd like to thank you for joining us today. Um, congratulations on all your progress. Uh, again, great presentation. Really appreciate you joining us. Um, I'd also like to thank the audience for their active participation. Um, for those new here, we do host these every Thursday at 3 p.m. Central. And again, 
this month's theme, January's theme is inputs and biologics. Um, so you can register for these agri-food conversations uh, by going to agrifoodconversations.com. Uh, you will be notified of the recording within the next 24 hours. Uh, so please point anybody who you think might be interested in this conversation uh, over to agrifoodconversations.com and they can listen to the replay. Um, so with that, I will uh, let you all go back to your Thursday afternoon and thank you all for joining and hopefully we will see you next week. Thank you very much for hosting.